Hello everybody, I'm Jeff Pitchford with Arkansas Farm Bureau and joining us today is State Senator Missy Irvin. She's from District 18. Senator, tell us, you've got a lot of counties in your district. Tell us about those. I mean, which counties are in your district? I do. I, I represent District 18, which comprises of nine counties in North Central Arkansas. So half of Fulton County, half of Baxter County, a little bite of Marion County. I have all of Searcy County, all of Stone County, all of Cleburne County part of Van Buren County, the northern part of Faulkner County, and a quarter of White County. You're in your so, vehicle all the time. I am. I go pretty much <laughs> almost from Pulaski County, El Paso, if everybody knows where El Paso is, all the way up to the Missouri uh, state line. That's right. So big, big swath. I have the kind of the Lake District. <laughs> mm -hmm. Besides taking care of your constituents, I know over the last couple of months, most folks have been quarantined at home, but you all have been busy here. The legislature's had a not only a special session, but a fiscal session. And during that, a very important bill was passed. Uh, you were the sponsor of it, an amendment to a bill that created a new program that a lot of folks in rural Arkansas are going to be very interested. The Rural ID uh, Broadband Program. Tell us about that program. Yeah, so it has been. It's been very, very busy. I'm chairman of public health, welfare, and labor committees. I've been literally nonstop working 24-7 on, on all types of issues from policy changes that need to be enacted quickly um, through an emergency process, through executive orders, on telemedicine, on um, insurance regulation relief uh, for healthcare workers in our hospitals. Um, and one of the biggest things that I think everybody can see is the, la the lack of infrastructure when it comes to rural broadband. Um, and it affects every single aspect of our life right now. It is just like rural electrification. So back in 1936, federal government passed the Rural Ele Electrification Act um, to really bring electricity to people's households. And it, we're basically at the same point in time. But this time, it's broadband that needs to be brought to every home. And we know that because of what has happened and this interruption with coronavirus has really brought that to the forefront. So during the fiscal session, we worked very hard and we've been working actually on this since last November. Um, but it was special language attached to the UAMS uh, appropriation bill that created the Rural Broadband ID program. ID stands for Identification and Deployment. And what that means is it really is about creating stakeholder groups and working with local ISPs that, that can service these areas. And this program is a wraparound uh, grant program for many on the front end to help them identify those grants and then to apply for the federal grants. There are huge amounts of federal monies available through USDA, through, the, um, through RDOF and through F the FCC. There's, there's all these different pots of federal money. So what we needed was somebody who could bring all that together and navigate that for our rural areas, for our cities, our counties, um, stakeholders, they could be schools, they could be hospitals, they could be healthcare providers and clinics. Those are anchor institutions, they could be libraries. Um, and so those anchor institutions get you more points, but you just need somebody who can, knows how to bring all the group of stakeholders together and kind of navigate that process. UAMS has done this and they've been very successful and they have developed and uh, cultivated those relationships at the federal level to be able to make that happen. And so we are using that expertise that resides right here at UAMS and they're going to help all of those areas around the state of Arkansas to get rural broadband out to people's homes. And it's so important, it's not just about telemedicine, it's really about economic development and it's also about education because we know that there are kids right now in the state of Arkansas who are doing AMI packets, and that's great, but it's very, very different if you have a kid who in some part of the state is able to do everything online because they have that broadband to their home versus mom and dad or whomever having to drive to pick up the packet in the morning and then bring the packet back at the end of the school day. So we need to be able to transition those students as quickly as possible. And that is really K through 12 and higher ed and graduate level. So everybody had to shift to online classes and we did not have the infrastructure for broadband to accommodate that. And for our students, that is absolutely necessary to make them successful as they move into the future. So our members across the state 
especially in the rural areas, what's your vision for the steps that they need to take? Uh, and say they have a, they're living in a rural area and uh, they're in one of those pockets where they yeah. don't have broadband. What's the vision there that they can do to The vision really to is to get all your mayors and your county judges to work with those ISP providers and then forge that stakeholder group that can apply for the federal grants that are available. And, the, and this program, once it's hopefully funded, will give the, the feasibility studies, the different types of components that you have to get in order to apply for the federal grant. Um, that money is up to $75,000 for all those different studies and components that need to happen. And then there's a back-end approach, which would help you with the any type of uh, uh, match money that would be required or those types of things to really jumpstart the program to get the get it to, on its feet. So I think it's a very well designed program. There's a lot of accountability that's built into it. Um, and it's really to use state dollars to leverage federal dollars. We do that all the time in state government and that's really the smarter way to spend your dollar. Um, and so that's, that's what this program does. So it, it's really about talking and getting that collaboration going and then figure out this is how we need to apply and to get everybody on board working with whoever that internet service provider that is willing, any willing provider that will partner with those different stakeholders to get this thing going in the different areas of Arkansas that are eligible under the FCC maps. Speaking of federal dollars, you also serve on the COVID-19 task force that the governor has put together. Yes. Uh, this is uh, looking at some of the federal dollars that we are hearing that's coming to the states. Uh, tell folks, especially in the agriculture world or the rural Arkansas world, what are some of the, the thoughts about the, and the processes about this money and, and, and how you all are working to, uh, to provide some relief to, to folks across Arkansas? So it's such a great question and you know there's 1.25 billion dollars that came to the state of Arkansas. So the governor threw an executive order and if you read that executive order it's really clear about the steps that we need to take in order to study and analyze what the needs are of the state of Arkansas. So when we first started I think we reacted quickly to the different needs and requests which were kind of emergency requests, right? To really make sure that we had the ability to kind of stabilize some areas, nursing homes, assisted living, really keeping people where they were at and taking care of them. So a lot of those programs were designed really as an emergency response to try to get people either back up and ready to open up for business or to really keep the healthcare structure in place. Child care is another one of them. So. So really we try to do that and respond as quickly as possible. But I think from here on out, it's really about trying to figure out what the strategic vision is for that huge pot of money and how we can best utilize it to prepare ourselves for the future. But also the first priority I think is to really stabilize our healthcare infrastructure. And you know as well as I do in rural Arkansas, that hospital and those clinics are really the infrastructure, the cornerstone of economic development. So we've got to stabilize that as we move forward. That's a number one priority. But the second priority is really about preparing for the future. Broadband is a big part of that. And I'm going to be pushing hard to spend some of these dollars really for this broadband infrastructure uh, as we go forward because that's how we're going to be able to transition quickly uh, when this comes up again. And it will come again. We know that. So, um, you know, it's just really about um, making sure that we're using common sense and being the best stewards of taxpayers' dollars and addressing and listening to all needs that are out there. I'm a cattle farmer, you guys know that. Um, and so, you know, it's really about looking at every single aspect of our, of our economy and how we can best um, really answer those needs that are out there to stabilize as best we can. Senator, thank you so much for taking your time and thank you for everything that you do for rural Arkansas. Thank you. Thank you for having me.